Well, once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the KOR universe. Uh, last year, the Knights of Rizal uh, came up with a third handbook uh, and it came from the international headquarters approved by the uh, Supreme Trustees headed by Sir Elihu Ibanez. This was compiled by Sir Avelino Torres who has been a member of the Supreme Trustees since 2012. Again, he chose not to run for the 2021 uh, Supreme Trustee election, but he gave us this momentous contribution to the KOR. This handbook is composed of 103 pages with five chapters. Page 16 starts the page about uh, what the KOR is all about. I will discuss the topic within this uh, presentation. Page 26 is about the charter of the Knights of Rizal, the laws and official designation of the Knights of Rizal as created by Republic Act 646. Page 30 has the latest uh, amended bylaws of 2018. This particular handbook can be differentiated from the 1985 and 1993 handbooks due to the chapters on guidelines that aim to be the Bible of the Knights of Rizal as Sir Elihu Ibanez puts it. About the KOR is a good start to introduce the basic tenets of the Knights of Rizal. I would suggest internalizing its contents for a better knight orientation. Moving forward, it would guide a knight in his dealings with the organization, both in the chapter and internationally, as well as what is expected of a knight on living a noble life beyond the organization. The history of the Knights of Rizal has been reviewed on videos by the international headquarters and the preceding official communications. The vision, mission, and code of ethics pertains to the setting a broad definition of a December, uh, deserving member of the Knights of Rizal. The rest of the topics refers to the more mundane ins and outs of the organization, from what one knight or chapter could do to satisfy the objectives of Republic Act 646, the law that made Knights of Rizal a para-governmental organization. The benefits of being a KOR could be used also in recruiting purposes. Like what I said in the previous video about the handbook cover, we will review pertinent topics of the handbook. This time around, the code of ethics should be the backdrop of any worthy knight. So we'll start this handbook review by understanding what our code of ethics, code of conduct, if you will. It is hoped that the broad strokes provided here would allow a knight or a group of knights to internalize the meaning of the organization to not only serve as a guide, uh, but also to Think of the code of ethics that is something to be pressed on during orientation with the KOR. First and foremost, Lizal loved his country. He was a broken man in his later years. 
that was only consoled by his steadfast love and devotion to his people. So as a Rizalist or a knight should love his country and his people. It is said that Rizal had many girlfriends, but his only main love that enveloped his whole being was his country. Rizal was the first Filipino, and during his time he presented the best of what a Filipino could be internationally. His accomplishments was revered by all nations that he visited and, in some cases, he did not even visit. Mexico, for instance. Rizal did not forget Gomburza and was an early eye-opener for him regarding the plight of the Filipinos. A Rizalist learns from the works of good men and women, especially heroes, who gave their lives for the common good of the country. A Rizalis is honorable as Rizal was honorable. Instead of thinking of his personal gains after being elected as leader of the propaganda movement, he gave way to Marcelo H. Del Pilar to prevent further division in the Filipino community of Madrid at that time. A Rizalis is just, having had the opportunity to escape the impending doom in the hands of the Spaniards in the Philippines, while he was in Singapore on his way to Cuba, he was not swayed into escaping and faced what he thought the justice of the law, even at the hands of the Spaniards. Rizal fought for freedom from the vestiges of abuse of power, specifically by the Spanish friars. So Rizalus upholds freedom not only of himself, but of others. Rizal befriended not only Filipinos in his travels, but stepped out of his comfort zone to learn different languages to understand and interact with people of different cultures and understanding. So a knight is not only to invite division and chaos in any situation. Rizal had a purpose and he wanted Filipinos to find their own purpose. He didn't want Filipinos to wither away in useless, useless and nonsensical dealings. He said, and I quote, It is useless life that is not consecrated to a great ideal. It is like a stone wasted on the field without becoming a part of an edifice. Rizal fought for education. In his letter to the women of Malolos, he made a great defense of education to quell ignorance and inferiority. A properly educated knight could assert his rights and when needed be significant in the community where he belongs. Rizal changed the Pitan at the time when others would have wallowed in self-defeat and self-pity, even in the face of tribulations, he made himself useful to the community. He used his own money to build infrastructure to better the lives of the natives of the Pitan, especially the children. He did not think only of himself when he was able to make change for the better, from nothing and from being banished. To the Pitan, he relied only on himself and had enough courage to change the community for the better. So a knight is industrious, self-reliant, and self-persevering. Rizal was not only conscious of the plight of the less fortunate, but he fought for them in his writings. The brothers Crispin and Basilio suffered from the hands of Padre Salvi where Crispin was presumed killed after being falsely accused of stealing. He depicted this unfortunate inequality of those in want and those in power in his novel Nolly. 
So a uh, Rhesalus is conscious of the plight of the less fortunate. Lastly, a knight is honest in the in word and in deed. Truthful is resolved that he did not turn his back to his principles and beliefs even after even in the eyes of death. He was true to his ideals and was ready to die for them. Of course, all these codes of ethics is deemed for a knight to conduct himself with dignity, benefiting, representing an organization inspired by a man who carried all these beliefs to heart. Dr. Jose Rizal Well, thank you for listening again. It is nice to learn about the expectations upon being a knight. At the end of the day, it is about being a better man and being around better men who could serve as an inspiration to what is proper and just. Once again, if you like the contents of this lecture blog, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and also sharing this video, especially to our brother knights who you think would be able to learn from this lecture. Again, thank you very much and Nanomnis Moriar.